we're going to discuss applications of trigonometry. So we're going to look at some application problems. And really the difference is with these, once you've gotten the idea of getting an angle or getting a side, these ask you to apply it to situations where you're not necessarily given the triangle. You've got to figure out what the triangle is. Um, and it's very important then to be able to take the words and create a picture, a diagram. So we're going to try to read the entire question carefully, underline some of the words that are important, and then we're going to try to use a little acronym. We're going to call it GRASS, all right? So you're going to list the things that you are given. You want to list the information and label it on the diagram, anything that you've been given. Then you're going to look at what are you trying to find. So you're, you're going to look at re what's required. So what are you given, then what's required. Then you're going to analyze that information to figure out which of the trig ratios you're going to need. Then you're going to solve. And then finally, you're going to write out a statement. So you're going to say, here's my actual answer. All right. So with any word problem or any application problem, you want to make a sort of finishing statement that says this is the answer instead of just saying x equals something it's nice to say this is the length of the tree or the height of the tree or something like that okay depending on the situation so we're going to try to use this acronym grass all right what are we given what's required let's analyze that information solve what once we determine what we need to use to solve and then make a statement at the end before we jump into actual problems though you just need to understand the concept of an angle of depression versus an angle of elevation, okay? So the angle of depression is from your le eye level down. So you'll notice here, if this is my eye level and I look down at this boat, this right here is the angle of depression, okay? So it's, the, it's from the horizontal down, looking down. If you look down like that. All right, how far have you looked down from your eye level? Generally, then, it's not actually in the triangle. It's not this angle, okay? People make that mistake fairly regularly. So don't think that it's this angle. It's the one outside. It's always from the horizontal. The angle of elevation is just the opposite of that. It's just down here, and it's looking up from the horizontal, okay? So instead of looking down, you're looking up. How far have you looked up? What you'll notice is the angle of elevation is always equal to the angle of depression. So we see that that's 48 and that's 48, okay? But it's always based on the horizontal. It's your line of sight from the horizontal. If you're looking up, it's an elevation because you're looking up. Depression, it's looking down, okay? So let's look at some of these questions and we'll see if we can use that information. So it says the main mast of a fishing boat is supported by a sturdy rope that extends from the top of the mast to the deck. If the mast is 20 feet tall and the rope attached to the mast is an angle of depression of 75 degrees, how long is the rope? So the first thing we want to try to do is identify some information that's important. We want that 20 feet tall. We want that angle of depression of 75 degrees. Okay, we need to use those numbers. And then we need to draw a picture. So it says the main mast of a fishing boat is secured by a rope. Okay, now your picture does not have to be real fancy. Mine are not going to be. If you want to draw them more fancy, that's fine. But this is my mast, okay, of my fishing boat. So you can imagine this is my fishing boat sort of, you know, down like this, and it makes a sail, okay? And it's, it's secured to a deck by a rope. So that's my rope. Now, what does it tell me about this mast and rope? It says the mast is 20 feet tall. So I'm given that information. Remember, we're starting with given, okay? So we're given that this is 20 feet. And then it says the angle of depression... Okay, so here's my horizontal. The angle of depression right here is 75 degrees. When I know that, I also know that this angle is 75 degrees. Okay, because the angle of depression is equal to the angle of elevation. So I'm done with the given stuff. That's all the information I've been given. Now, what do I want to know? Well, what you want to know is right here. How long is the rope? So that means I want to know the rope length. I'm going to call it X. Okay. So then I analyze. I've, I've figured out what's required. Now I analyze. What is it then that I'm going to use? Well, using this angle, this is the opposite side, right? And this is the hypotenuse. So I want to use sine. Sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse, right? So katoa, so it's the so part, opposite over hypotenuse. So sine of the angle, 75 degrees, is equal to 20 
over x. All right, so I've analyzed, I've figured out what is it that I'm supposed to do. Now I want to solve it. So to solve it, hopefully you remember solving these. If you don't, look back to the previous video, but we're going to end up with this. 20 divided by the sine of 75. Okay, and then you just do that on your calculator. And you should put in the um, calculations, the way your calculator works. All right, you have to be careful how your calculator works because Sometimes you have to put in the sine of 75 first. Sometimes you can type the whole thing in at once. But you should get 20.7 feet. Okay, so now I've solved it. I've done the solving part. So then I make a statement. I say the rope is 20.7 feet long. That's my answer in my statement. So I looked at what I was given. I looked at what I was required to find. I analyzed that information and I said I need to use sine. Then I solved that and then once I got my answer I made a statement at the end. So I've, I've done my grass. All right. Well, let's look at another example. It says Sherry went to a level field to fly a kite. She let out all 650 feet of a string and tied it to a stake. Then she walked out on the field until she was directly under the kite. If the angle of elevation of the string is 68 degrees, how far did she walk? So the first thing we're going to notice is she's going to, first of all, she's going to a field to fly a kite, and she ties it to a stake in the ground. So here's the stake. Here's my kite. All right? There's my kite flying in the wind. Then she walks until she's directly below it. So if I sort of draw this like so... It tells me she let out all 650 feet of string. So I'm given that, and that's going to go here because that's where the string is, right? It says then that she walked the field and she was directly under the kite, and the angle of elevation is 68 degrees. So I'm given that as well, right? I'm on this given stage. What am I given? So I'm given that this is 68 degrees. And then it says how far did she walk? So that's the required part. I'm, I've written down what I'm given. Now, what am I required to find? I'm trying to figure out how far did she walk. So that's this value here. That's our x. So then I analyze that. I say, okay, well, then what do I need to uh, actually find in terms of the angle, right? So I'm talking about sides now in terms of adjacent hypotenuse instead of in terms of x and 650. So if this is the angle, this is the adjacent side, right? That's the a. And this 650 is the hypotenuse. So that gives me a clue, as I analyze that, that I'm going to use cosine, because cosine is adjacent and hypotenuse. So I'm going to write down cosine of 68, then, is equal to adjacent, which is x, over the hypotenuse, which is 650. And then I'm going to solve. So I've analyzed, I've came up, I came up with my equation, now I'm going to solve it. So I'm going to say x, then is 650 times the cosine of 68 degrees. And if I do that on my calculator, I get, let's see, 650 times the cosine of 68, 243.5. Okay, I'm going to round to that. And that's in feet. So now I'm going to make, I've solved, now I'm going to make my statement. So I'm going to say she walked, or uh, Sherry walked 243.5 feet. So it's using that every time, okay? Well, I'm going to get you to try these. There's a few of them here. Try to use that given, required, analyze, solve statement, the grass, okay, to, to solve these. The angle of elevation from a ship to the top of a lighthouse. Uh, and then what's the angle of depression? And then if the angle of depression is this, what's that? So I'm going to leave those for you to try. The only one that we will do, though, because we haven't done an example yet, is this one. What's the angle of depression? Because we haven't, haven't found an angle yet. So it's looking for the angle of depression. It says the sun has to make, in order to pass a 14.2-meter shadow from a 10.8-meter tall tree. So here's my tree. Okay. 
The sun's going to shine and it's going to make a shadow. This is my shadow, okay? And you can sort of draw the tree along here too, okay? So that's, that's my shadow. Uh, and it says that the, the shadow, so what I'm given, all right, first is 14.2 meters is here. And 10.8 meters is the height of the tree. So the height of the tree is 10.8. And it wants the angle of depression, which is actually this angle, right? It wants this. That's what it's required. I want that. I'm going to call it theta. But that theta is the same as this theta. Okay, so I figured out what I'm required to find. So I was given some information. I put it on my graph. So I did the given part. Then I looked at what I was required to find. Now I'm going on to A, right? Analyze. So based on that, I'm going to look at what is, if this is the angle, what is this side? This side is opposite, right? So that's O, and this side is adjacent. That's A. So if I look at my Soka Koa, I'm going to use tangent. So I'm going to say tangent of theta is opposite, which is 10.8, divided by 14.2. So now I've analyzed and come up with an, uh, an equation to solve. So now I move on to solve. And to solve this, I'm going to use the arc tangent okay, of that ratio, 10.8 divided by 14.2. And you should be used to solving these. You have practiced that by now. So we're just going to do it on our calculator. So I'm going to take the arc tan. And again, my calculator allows me, and I know you can't see it, but I'm doing it right here. You can see my calculator. If you look at the screen, this is my calculator. Okay. And it allows me to do this all at once. Yours may not. So calculations and make sure that you can get the answer. I'm getting 37.3 degrees. So then I make a statement and I say the statement is the angle of depression is 37.3 degrees. So I make a little statement at the end. Okay. So there's an example where you're finding an angle instead. But you can do the other two. Just pause the video if you want to do them right now, or you can do them later. But those are the two that I'd like you to try. Okay, as we go through this, you're going to also see some questions that are a little bit more uh, difficult, maybe, or a little stranger. So I want to look at a couple of these. Um, this one here, we're going to look at this one, question number five. Uh, it says, Johan's barn is 12.3 meters long. He's constructing a lean-to against the side of it. The angle of elevation of the roof of the lean-to is 21 degrees, and it meets the side of the barn at a point 4.8 meters above the ground. How much roofing will he need to cover the roof of the lean-to? Give your answer in square meters to one decimal place. So in order to do that, what we have to look at is the, the area is the length times the width, right? We know the length, and we need the width. So we're going to say area is length times width. We know the length. We're given that. Okay, and in this case, we didn't have to draw the diagram because it was given to us, but that's 12.3. What we're also given is that this height is 2 meters, and the whole height from here to the bottom is 4.8. So that means this distance right here, I know this is probably a little bit hard to see, but is 2.8 meters. Okay. So I'm given all of that information. What am I required to find? Well, what I'm required to find is the width, right? I want to know this length right here. And in order to find that, then, I need to analyze. What, I, what do I have? Well, I have the opposite side, and I have the hypotenuse. The width is the hypotenuse. So I'm going to use sine in this case to find that width. So I'm going to say sine of 21 degrees is the width, sorry, is the opposite side, 2.8, over the width, W. So that means W is 2.8 divided by the sine of 21, right? When W is on the bottom or X, whenever the variable is on the bottom, you just divide. So we're going to get W. It's going to be whatever, 2.8 divided by the sine of 21 is. And that comes out to 7.8. So now I can find my area. My area is going to be 7.8 multiplied by 12.3, which is the length. And if I take 7.8 and multiply it by 12.3, I get 90, 
it says to one decimal, so I get 95.9 .9 square meters. Okay, so I've solved, and then I make a statement. So I say the area is 95.9 .9 square meters. So that's how much roofing he's going to need to cover. Okay, so it's a little bit more complicated. Same idea, still a triangle, still right angle trigonometry, but a little bit more complicated of a question because there's a little more to it. There's a step outside of the trig, okay? And there are other questions in here. I'm not going to do a whole bunch of them. Uh, I'll let you kind of look at them, but we'll do just one as we go through to sort of sample and see how we do this. Look at question number three here. Totem poles it says are usually erected by being pulled upright with ropes into a wooden scaffold support until they're stable. So it says suppose the two ropes attached to the pole are at angles of elevation of 47 and 57. And it says that the base of the ropes are 26 meters from the totem pole. We want to know how long is each rope. So again, what we're given, we actually already have a label. So we don't have to worry about the given part because it was already given to us and labeled in a diagram. Sometimes it will be, sometimes it isn't, but in this case it is. What we're required, if we look at the, all right, remembering our acronym, what we're required to find is this. We want to know what this is, and we want to know what this is. Okay, so if we call this X, let's say, and we'll call this Y, then we need to analyze, how do I find X? So we know the base, we know the adjacent side then, and we're looking for the hypotenuse. So we're going to use cosine. So we're going to say cosine of 47 is the adjacent side, which is 26 over X. So that means X, actually let's analyze both these at the same time and then we'll solve at the same time. So uh, Y, same thing, we have the adjacent side, we're looking for the hypotenuse. So it's gonna be exactly the same calculation, just different numbers, cosine of 57, and it's gonna equal adjacent, which is 26 over our X. And now we're gonna solve these, we're gonna move to our X, okay? We've done, we know we're given, we have, what we required, we've analyzed, now we're looking at what is it that I'm solving. So I'm going to get 26 over the cosine of 47. And then here, I'm going to get 26 over the cosine of 57. So I'm going to do those calculations. So 26 divided by the cosine of 47 gives me 38. Point 0.1 meters, and 26 divided by the cosine of 57 uh, gives me something I would expect a little bit longer, and it is, it's 47.7 meters. Okay, and so then we make a final statement. Uh, I don't have room, unfortunately, here, but we can just say this rope, I'll just say it instead of writing it out, but this rope here, the shorter rope is 38.1 meters, and the longer rope is 47.7 meters. Okay, so there, there are different ways to sort of ask these questions, and there's different complications that can happen, but that's the idea of solving these problems. What I'll do, I want to just look, there's a, there's a bunch more here, okay, that involve tangent, but then let's look at one that involves multi-angles. In other words, let's, let's look at one that, that involves looking at trig in two separate triangles or in a triangle within a triangle, that kind of thing. So we'll just look at one of these examples, and then or maybe two, we'll see, and then I'll let you try some of them as well. But this is an RCMP helicopter has been dispatched to find a missing person. An officer in the helicopter spots a vehicle matching the person's car parked at an intersection. Using her GPS unit, an RCMP officer in the helicopter determines the horizontal distance from the helicopter to the intersection is 400 meters. She also estimates that the angle of depression for the helicopter to the intersection is 20 degrees. The helicopter begins to rise vertically, and three minutes later, the reporter estimates that the angle of depression to the intersection is now 45 degrees. So you say, what in the world? That's a lot of information. The nice thing is you're given a picture. So everything we're given is actually already there for us. We don't have to do the given part because it's written in there. But what I want you to notice is what we're required to find is right here. We're looking for this height, okay? Now, we don't know exactly what that height is, but we know that this angle is 45. So if I analyze this, it means that this angle right here, this whole angle, is also 45 degrees. And since this is 20, this little angle right here is also 20. 
Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually find two heights. We're going to find the entire height from top to bottom. And we're going to do that using this big triangle. So using 45 degrees and um, the 400 on the bottom here. Okay. So let's do that first. I'm going to call this H. So I'm going to say, if I look at that, if I analyze that, I know H. So that's the opposite side of the 45. And I know 400, which is the adjacent side. I'm going to use tangent. So I'm going to say tangent of 45 is going to equal the whole height divided by 400. So that means if I solve that part, that H is 400 times the tangent of 45. And if you do it on your calculator, uh, you'll get 400. So the whole thing is 400 meters. Now, I want to find this guy next. Okay, so maybe we'll do it a different color so you can see what I'm doing. We'll call this um, Y, all right? So Y is the opposite side. 400 is still the adjacent side, but now the angle is 20. So if I analyze that, I recognize that I need to use tangent again. Okay, then I'm going to solve that. I'm going to say Y then is 400 times the tangent of 20. And if I take 400 times tan 20 on my calculator again, I'm going to get about 146, 145.6, we'll say, meters. Okay. So what does that allow me to do? Well, what it allows me to do is, okay, find that x by taking h, which is the whole height, and subtracting y which is the smaller height. So I'm going to take 400 and subtract 145.6. And that will give me my answer. So you get 254.4 meters. That's how far the helicopter climbed in three minutes. So the helicopter climbed, and again, our statement is the helicopter climbed 254.4 meters. Then it says, at what speed did it rise, assuming a constant speed? So if you, in three minutes, um, I'm just going to multiply that by 60 and get it into seconds. So that's 180 seconds. So the speed uh, is going to be, actually, I'll write it as speed is going to equal the distance divided by the time. So we traveled 254.4 meters, and we did it in 180 seconds. So just divide those. And we get 1.41 meters per second. You could do it in meters per minute. If you wanted to, you could take 254.4 and divide it by three minutes, and you'd get it in meters per minute. Uh, but generally, you either report speed. The standard unit for speed is either meters per second or kilometers per hour. You don't usually write it as meters per minute. So that's my answer. Okay, and again, Included in this, there's a there's a couple more, a couple more challenging ones. Okay, there's one here. And again, we're not going to go through these. We'll just say try this, and I want you to try it on your own, and then your teacher can tell you what the answers are. But here's one here. And then there's a couple more underneath of that. Okay, so here's a simple one with a tree. And then here's one with a lake. Okay, it's kind of a similar triangle sort of situation, right? So I'll leave that there, and you can practice with the Smart Notebook, the PDF file of it, so you have the questions, and you can do the questions that your teacher gives you as well, uh, and you should be able to figure these out or ask questions of them if you can't.